Whenever someone would go missing in the wood, said Liam, his eyes quickly darting back toward a customer in the store, a woman at the door kneeling to fasten the zipper on her little boy's jacket, before starting back out on their way. Me Gran would say, they'll never find them, not hide nor hair. They've gone under the hill with the old ones. And if it was a child that went missing in the wood? I asked, exchanging a knowing glance with Shay as he leaned across the store counter toward Liam. What would your gran say then? She would say, Liam began again, his eyes catching mine and his voice taking on a hushed quality, not quite a whisper. They've been whisked away by the wee ones. The pause that passed between the three of us couldn't have lasted more than a minute. A long 60 seconds. And then it was overtaken by the jingle jangling of the little bell above the store's door as the woman and her little boy finally walked out of the store and into the rest of their day. Hear me now, Liam said, cutting a quick glance toward the slowly closing store door. There's something in the wood and it hates us all of us to a fucking one of us. Shay and I cut puzzled glances at each other and mouthed a quick fucks he on about. As we watched Liam quickly round the counter, checking every aisle of the store to make sure that there was no one left inside but us, before going to the door and locking it shut. As we watched, Liam peeked first to the left, then to the right, out of the store window as if he was checking to see if there was anyone outside of the store, before turning the open sign hanging on the door to the closed side. What do you mean, Liam? Shay asked, as Liam turned and made his way back toward us. What's in the wood that hates us? It's a malevolence, said Liam, taking his place back behind the counter and leaning close to Shay, matching Shay's curious stare with a look of both fear and anger in his own. Those children were taken as a tithe. As Shay and I watched, Liam suddenly backed away from the counter and turned away from us. When he turned back toward us, his face and eyes had tightened into a mask of confliction. His thick fingers rubbed first his chin and then slid through his hair as he seemed to be struggling with what to say next and how much of what was clearly eating at his conscience and weighing on his soul to divulge to us. They were taken as a reckoning, Liam began again, catching our eyes with his own, as he thrust his arm forward, his thick finger pointing toward the store window, and the Enniscreg town's people walking up and down the sidewalk beyond it. A reckoning for debts unpaid, for crimes committed, in times gone by the fucking by. And they all know it, but will never say it out loud. What do they know, Liam? I asked, hoping to coax more out of him. They know that we're never going to find those kids, Liam said after a moment. A somber look taking hold of his face, and that hushed quality again settling into his voice, as if he were preparing himself for the inevitable. Not a one of them, not alive, not hide, nor hair. Because of this, malevolence, I asked. The wee ones, said Liam, his voice almost a whisper, as if his saying the name out loud, in a full-throated voice, was akin to speaking of the devil. They want us dead, they do. They want us all dead starting with our children.